17 meter hoog en 32 meter breed. En uh, om je een idee te geven hoeveel stroom er nou verbruikt wordt op zo'n hel pingpop terrein, dat is uh, 2,5 miljoen kilowatt. En je kunt je voorstellen dat is uh, ongeveer zoveel als een middelgrote stad in Nederland. Pinkpop 98 vindt niet alleen buiten plaats, maar ook hier in de 3FM tent. De kleinste tent van Pinkpop met een capaciteit van ongeveer 3000 mensen. Uh, het is voornamelijk een danstent en het is hier nu al een beetje broeierig. Nog wel leeg, maar wel broeierig. Hier spelen straks onder meer uh, de Tindersticks, 16 horsepower, Granddaddy. Veel dance dus, veel swingen. Wat vorig jaar het Noordpodium was, is dit jaar veranderd in de Roskilde tent. En met een tent maak je Pinkpop dus een beetje weersonafhankelijk. En dat is precies de reden waarom de organisatie voor deze mogelijkheid gekozen heeft. De Roskilde tent is de op één na grootste tent van Europa met een capaciteit van ongeveer 16.000 mensen. Nu hoor je hier nog lekkere, zachte, klassieke muziek. Maar straks speelt hier onder meer Garbage, Junkie XL en Tori Amos. Pinkpop is natuurlijk niet alleen muziek, je moet ook de inwendige mens voeden. Dat kun je daar doen met kleffe hamburgers, hotdogs, shawarma, weet ik veel. En uh, als je dan uh, een t-shirt voor je moeder wil kopen, dan moet je daar zijn. En als je geld wil pinnen om bijvoorbeeld nog iets leuks voor je moeder te kopen, dan moet je daar zijn, bij de Giromaat. En er werd vorig jaar voor 700.000 gulden gepind. Dus wie zegt nou dat de jongeren tegenwoordig geen poen meer hebben. En als je poen nou op is, dan kan je nog even daar bellen naar je moeder of je nog meer centjes kan krijgen. Marco Roelof zien we vandaag nog regelmatig terugzien. Hij is niet mijn enige collega op het veld. Lotje IJsmans doet interviews met een aantal bands, waaronder de Smashing Pumpkins en Garbage. Behalve Lotje IJsmans en Marco Roelofs ook bijdragen vanaf het veld middels de High 8 camera. En ik heb het al gezegd, je kunt ons internet laten weten wat je ervan vindt. Uh, enzovoort, enzovoort. Naar de muziekmarkt. Morgen om half elf hier op het hoofdpodium achter mij mocht het allemaal geopend worden door de Zweedse Amerikaanse zanger Eagle Eye Cherry. Aan het voorbok hier kun je zien dat we daar straks aan het gaan besteden. Nu alvast even naar de band achter mij, de Deftones.
Deftones is de band van Chino Moreno. We komen uit Sacramento in Californië. In de afgelopen vier jaar twee albums uitgebracht. Tijd voor een nadere kennismaking. Direct meer muziek van de Deftones van het hoofdpodium hier achter mij. Maar de Deftones is zo'n band die een jaar lang echt voortdurend toert. Het zal niet echt 365 dagen zijn, maar het zit er wel tegenaan. Maar als ze in eigen land in Amerika zijn en ze hebben even de gelegenheid, dan gaan ze altijd naar het huis van hun tourmanager. Inside meet everybody right. from Devtones here. Uh, by the way, I'm Chino, so you know, here I am. Come on in. Today's our day off, you see. There's Mac. It's our bass player, Chi Chang. You see, he's, uh, he's pretty into, into his. What's he reading this week? Inches. Oh, right on. Over here, we have Abe, our drummer. He's a. Uh, See, he's going over some drum. Uh, what are you guys doing right now? Just some serious shit right here. Drum supply stuff, you know. So this is actually Stefan's house. He lives here with uh, our road manager and everybody else. We're in Cleveland right now, Cleveland, Ohio. We got people doing laundry today. Come on. Down here would be Stefan's cave. This is our guitar player, Stefan Carpenter, in his place of, uh, of residence. What, what are you, you doing an interview right now or what? Yeah. It's previous on an interview right now. Like I said, we don't stop. We just gotta constantly be working. So now you know everybody. Uh, we'll be seeing you. This is basically our home when we're not when we're uh, not at home. Um, let's see what we got. Come on up. It's our front lounge here. It's where everybody hangs out when we have day drives. Um, it's rare we drive in the daytime. We usually drive at night. Um, we, we play a show. Basically got about maybe an hour and a half to get all our things together, put them on the bus, and then we're out and we sleep. And this is where we sleep. Come on, I'll show you. Before that is our laboratory, which, uh, you know, can't throw any solids down there. Um, this, these were, this is where we sleep. These are our bunks. Uh, you know, curtains closed and open and closed. Uh, basically like, like miniature coffins. We're, we're preparing ourselves for death here. These are, um, this is my bunk right now. As you see, it's kind of messy. I got a uh, snot rags in here. Actually, these aren't mine. We got a, uh, I always carry my lunch wherever I go, so I make sure I bring my Star Wars lunch pail. So how would you uh, describe your own music? Uh, I would say that it's, um, it's heavy, but it's, it's, not a, it's not all heavy. I mean, it's, It's more heavy emotionally than it is heavy all the time, just in your face. I mean, our, I think our music is really dynamic. It has a lot of different moods. Um, maybe, maybe a good word to be, would call it moody music. things and, it, and all it does is warm me up inside it makes me feel really tight really really you know really unique it gives me it gives me like a little a little bit of identity with with my within myself and I'm coming at you from more of a vulnerable side which is something that's not really in heavy music these days it's not really you know uh, common it's usually if, if there's hard music it's usually like somebody you know like you know yelling about how how tough they are or whatever and me I feel a lot like I feel a lot of uh, insecurities I think a lot of times you know and and I think that comes out sometimes in the music and which offsets the heaviness One 
of the main bands I think that really influenced me was uh, was uh, Faith No More, who 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 was a band that that made heavy music, but it was also really melodic. There's a lot of um, the vocals, especially, were really in, in, intelligent. I think there were a lot of it was a, a really rhythmically tight. A lot of the vocals, and, and they also there's a lot of melody to them. And that's something I really adored. So that was something I, I kind of try to go for, if anything. I think a lot of people think of heavy metal and they think back they think of the big hair, you know, and the leather yeah. and the and the and you know the, the, the booze and the chicks, you know what I mean? And that I, I mean I definitely saw see that as part of, you know, a lifestyle. I mean, especially for us since we're always out on tour all the time and always out in, you know, at clubs every night and, you know, drinking almost every night and partying almost every night. But but it's not what we base our, our music on. Our music's based around, you know, just more lively whole you know, more things that are that are more true to our actual life and and I think a lot of people can identify with that and it makes the music a lot stronger and makes it more, you know, gives it more worth. Picture of my, of my one-year-old who's, in this picture I think he's six months, this is around Christmas time, so this is this is Jacoby. This is a little uh, closer to that little photo of him. He's one now, so this is like, you know, half a year ago, yeah. actually. It's my wife, Celeste. This is me and my four-year-old here playing a puzzle on the kitchen floor around Christmas time. I'm never at home for too, too long of a time, so I haven't really experienced really being home. It's like when I go home, it's sort of like vacation because um, I'm living a completely different lifestyle. Like, you know, I go home and I have my, my family there. I have my, you know, my, my brothers and sisters. I have my, my two little boys. And, um, and it's like, a, it's weird. It's like, a, it, feels, it feels really, really good. It feels really normal. But then I'm home for like maybe five days and I already start to kind of get a little bugged out because I'm so used to just moving all the time. And uh, it starts to get a little frustrating. Even though I love, I, it's not, I love being home. I love spending time with my family and friends. Um, it's like, you know, you just kind of got to weigh it out. Where do you see yourself in 10 or 20 years? Still in um, a band? I don't know if it's going to be uh, this band. I don't know what it'll be, but I know definitely I'll be, I'll be doing something that has to do with music. I mean, that's that's the love of my life is music, and I'm sure I'll always be doing something with music, whether it's even working at a record store. I know I'll be in, you know, some something that has to do with music. I, do, I love music that much, and it inspires me to, to live. So I'm going to be doing music forever. I mean, till, till the day I die, I'll be in my bed with my Walkman on listening to music, I'm sure.